Hi there. Today I'm going to be talking about performing to audiences. I'm going to be talking about why you should be doing it and giving you some tips on how to overcome the dreaded stage fright. Today's video is targeted towards people who have never played to an audience before or they might just be starting out on their journey. But if you are playing to audiences, you might still find this video useful with some of the things I'm going to say. I'm going to be going over the many years I've been playing music and uh, just talking about my personal journey of playing to audiences and um, hopefully you'll be able to get some valuable information from that. The first thing I'll address is why you should play to audiences. There's the obvious thing, I suppose, of, you know, just sharing your music with people and the joy that it can bring to other people and the joy it can bring to it yourself. But also, I think performing to audiences just makes you sharper as a musician. It forces you to focus on what you're doing and to do it as best as you can. My journey of performing to audiences started when I was about... 11 or 12. I was playing piano, um, didn't have any burning desire really to perform to anyone else, but my piano teacher thought it would be a good idea. So she talked me in to performing to my music class at school and uh, I agreed to it. She got in touch with the music teacher for the class and we set a date when I would deliver the performance. I think it was about a month away or something like that, which gave me lots of time to practice. So this is what I went through with my first performance. And it wasn't just my first performance, many after that too. But this one, it was booked about a month out, I think, something like that. So I had a month to practice and get my act together. And it seemed like, oh great, a month away, no worries. It's a long way away. Then a week goes by, three weeks to go. Yeah, it's getting closer, but it's still a long way away. Then two weeks to go, mm, it's coming up. Okay, you know, I'm practicing all this time, of course. Start thinking a lot more about it. Another week goes by, one week to go. Okay, it's still a week away. It's not today, that's all right. Uh, then it's six days, five days, four days. Three days, it's coming up. Two days, and then I wake up. It's the day I have to perform to the class. I've got this little piano piece, lasts about, I don't know, a couple of minutes, two or three minutes or something like that, and I have to perform it. I was feeling pretty nervous that day. I guess I could have said I was sick and not turned up. But I don't think I would have been fooling anyone. And in particular, I wouldn't have fooled myself. And I don't think I would have been able to live with myself if I hadn't have gone through with it. So I just had to get up there in the class and I did it. And um, the experience, I really don't remember a lot doing it. Um, I think I made a few mistakes, but I just ploughed through it. And at the end of it, Everybody, all the class just uh, went crazy and they just, yeah, applauded and clapped and said good on you, you know, that sort of thing. So the, the whole thing was a really good experience. Even though it probably wasn't a great performance, it was a performance. And it got me started performing. I would go through that experience many more times over the years. I didn't play any more live to people for a few years and then when I was 16 I started getting into rock bands. I always end up being the singer in these bands I guess because no one else wanted to do it. So being the singer, you're the front person, there's a lot of attention on you. If you're the drummer or the bass player or someone you can probably sort of you know skulk off to the back of the stage or something but you can't do that if you're the singer you have gotta be up there and everyone's watching you. So my first performance when I was 16 in a band 
Yeah, very similar. I think we were booked two months out this time. So it all went slower, but the thing about time, it never stops. And eventually you wake up and it's the day of your performance and you've got to do it. If you don't do it, well, you know, I, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do it. So I've always just had to do it. So later on, I'm going to talk more in depth about performance anxiety. But I'll just say something right now about my early years as a musician and performing. To overcome stage fright, performance anxiety, I resorted a lot to self-medication, mostly alcohol. I did that for many years. Uh, probably a lot of the time sounded pretty shite, but you're sort of comforted by this blanket of alcohol, this warm, comfortable blanket that goes around you and it seems to sort of knock all the rough edges off life. Now, I don't recommend that at all. I'll get into more into that soon. So as I mentioned earlier on, you need audiences just to get better and sharper on your instrument. It enlarges your comfort zone, you get more confidence, and the hard things become easier. And I don't think if you're just playing to yourself, you really get the same level of perfection that you can obtain by playing to an audience. But it's not necessarily an easy thing to do, and it's, uh, for a lot of people, really scary. And it's really scary because it's eliciting a stress response. You're going into fight or flight mode. And the reason why is because we've evolved um, so that reputation is a big deal in society. And you're worried about, oh, what will people think of me? And that's why. And with fight or flight mode, uh, there's all kinds of things that can happen to you. Your heart rate can increase, your mouth can go dry, your throat can tighten, you start to tremble, things like that. All the things you don't want to happen when you're playing music, you need to be relaxed. So you have to come up with some kind of way of overcoming that. There's lots of videos on YouTube about overcoming stage fright. So if you want to start performing to audiences and you're a bit fearful of it, you should watch some of them. I was watching some before I made this video, but a lot of them I just couldn't relate to. They're talking about techniques where I just kind of think, I don't know, just at least for my experience, it's just not living in the real world. It's just, I don't think if I used them back in the day, I would have overcome stage fright at all. Um, but, you know, check some of these out, um, but be wary. I may be wary of what I'm saying. It might not be exactly the information that you need either. I'm just relating my personal journey, my personal observations, and from that, you know, just techniques that I think will help you as a musician to get more confident to play to audiences. So, what to do? First thing I recommend, if you've never played to anyone before, is do it privately and start small. So, you know, one or two friends, something like that, play a few tunes to them. They're never going to be too hard on you if they're your friends. And also, you're doing it privately. So you get to start building your comfort zone in private. So you already have a bit of a comfort zone around you for performing. Uh, the next step might be something like a few open mics or something like that. Where that's where a lot of people, I think, their first performances are at open mics. You're likely to be playing to audiences who are appreciative they're not too hard on you. And so, you know, and people who go through the open mics might be in the same boat as you. So it's a good place to venture into public performance. 
and that will enlarge your comfort zone a little bit more when you've done that. I've seen people who have done that, they've just started out, they're just a, a wreck when they first start out at an open mic, but they go back and over the months they can develop into really confident, competent performers. So consider that. And as your comfort zone enlarges, um, you might find, you might get offers to play at other places or you might feel confident to book some kind of show or do something or play with some other people and book a show or something like that. And your comfort zone over time can just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's, that's been the case for me. I've really started um, as a very shy, introverted kind of person, but now um, performing on a lot of stages, I'm just sometimes uh, I just feel more relaxed sometimes performing on the stage than I do off the stage. And that's not something that I was born with, that's just something that evolved over time. So I think. Performing to audiences is almost like a form of practice to get better at performing to audiences. Because performing to audiences is kind of a mental game. So you have to get used to being the centre of attention and you have to get used to all these eyeballs being upon you and being comfortable with that and not burning up and not thinking about it and not feeling all this attention on you and losing your concentration and forgetting about the music next thing boom you wipe out in your performance uh, yeah I've done that a few times I, I think probably everyone's done that a few times so performance is kind of it's like an end in itself and it's a means to an end so it's a means to an end as, as a way of getting better at doing it the number one thing for performing is be prepared. So whatever piece of music you're going to perform, just know it backwards, be prepared. The number two thing, maintain that focus when you're playing. Just try and do it. Just try and keep focused on that music. You know you can do it. You've prepared yourself to do it and stay focused on it. And if for some reason you play a wrong note or something like that, just plough through it, just keep going, don't stop, don't stop and don't think about that audience, it's good if you're playing harmonica, the good thing about it, um, if you're just playing, you might be able to just close your eyes and concentrate on what you're doing, that might help, I actually do that a lot, I don't, I don't do that to overcome stage fright or anything, I just do that as a form of concentration sometimes when I'm playing, because you can when you're playing harmonica, so it's great. So getting back to fight or flight as a stress response, flight is obviously out of the question, otherwise there'd be no performance. There is one other stress response that a lot of musicians try, and that is self-medication. <laughs> and I don't recommend that. I did that for many years, as I said before. It didn't work too well for me. I had a lot of problems with it, and I've also observed it being a problem for a lot of other people that I've worked with, uh, especially if you get to that level where you're performing all the time, if you've been doing that and you need alcohol, there might come a day when you need to give it up, and I've noticed it's very hard for people to give it up when they've had to rely on it for a long time. I didn't start playing professionally until I had given it up. Um, before that I couldn't really hold down regular gigs at all. So I only started doing regular gigs afterwards, so that was all good for me, but I observed with people I was playing with uh, who needed alcohol to get through, the professionals, they're playing every week, and then suddenly they want to give it up and find it very hard. So don't rely on self-medication, alcohol or drugs to deliver that performance. I don't think it works, and it doesn't really make you that sharp. It, it, dulls your senses, uh, yeah, it dulls your fingers if you've got to use your fingers or whatever. Um, so the only response you can do is fight mode. So performance is a form of fight. So 
make sure you're prepared, make sure you just got to stay focused and it's a form of fight, you go out there and you kick ass. I think it takes practice to get comfortable with performing. A lot of these videos that I was watching, they sort of say, oh, I'll just do this and do that and go out and you'll crack it. And yeah, that might be the case, but it wasn't like that for me. It took a long time. So it was really a, yeah, a form of practice. You just got to go out there each time and maybe get better at it each time you do it. And you enlarge that comfort zone and you get more relaxed and you get more confidence. So for that reason, just be kind on yourself. If you do a dud performance, because everybody does that. Even people who are experienced performers can do a dud performance every now and again. And I've seen that and I've done it. I think probably everyone's done it. The thing is, is just be kind to yourself. Um, it's kind of true that you know, you're only as good as your last performance, but I think, but don't, don't let it get you down. You just, you know, if you're off the horse, you're just going to get back on again and just keep going. And generally, you know, you will, you will get better and better at performing. Don't beat yourself up about it. So I hope this has helped you if you're looking to perform. And if you're not performing and you've, don't really see the need for it, um, maybe this has changed your mind because I really do think it makes you sharper, it makes you more confident, it makes you more relaxed, it makes you a better player. See you later.